What is up guys, Randomonium here with your week 3 fantasy LCS analysis and prediction video. In this video I'm going to break down all of the matchups for NA and EU LCS for week 3. Um, I will be talking about what happened in week 2, so this is your spoiler warning. And uh, I did recently put out a strategy video for fantasy LCS because I was getting a lot of very similar questions from people about which player they should choose. And the truth of the matter is that if you've got like an S tier player or another S tier player, which one you should pick really depends on your team and your opponent's team more than you know what the point values are going to be. If they're the same tier, they are going to get around the same amount of fantasy points. So if you have questions like that, I highly encourage you to watch that video. I'll put a link to it in the description below. And I'll also uh, put a little eye up there for you guys to click on it. Um, but yeah, so that should hopefully answer a lot of questions. If you have any other questions, please ask me. I'll be happy to answer them. And I have been listening to your guys' feedback. So this video is going to be much longer than normal videos. And I'm going to go into a lot more detail. But I will provide a TLDR to start off the video for those who don't have enough time to watch the entire video. So let's, uh, let's get into it. So uh, first thing we're talking about is the EU strategy, the overall EU strategy. And uh, this is what the different blocks mean. Purple means that the team's got two matches that week. Green means that you want to pick up the team that week. Yellow means that the team only has one match that week, so you probably want to keep them on the bench. And red means that you probably want to drop uh, players from that team after that point because they will no longer have two matches per week. So we're currently in uh, week three, and Splice and Fnatic are the EU teams this week that have two matches this week so those are the two teams that you want to be focusing on to pick up if you need to shore up some weaknesses in your fantasy team I definitely think that Fnatic has an easier week than Splice does and then the other two teams you gotta be looking at for week four are G2 and H2K however G2 and H2K play each other in week four so in that head-to-head -head matchup right now I'm leaning towards G2 I feel like they've been um, a more solid team, a more predictable team, but we'll have to wait until week three to figure out who's actually going to win that match. But uh, if there are some G2 players available and you've got room on your bench, you might want to pick up the G2 players now because they are going to get picked up for week four. All right, so now we're going to go into the actual the week strategy, just talking about the teams in general. So if the win loss is in white, that means I think it's going to be a normal game, normal amount of fantasy points. If it's in red, that means I think it's going to be a stomp. That usually means less fantasy points for both teams, especially the losing team. And if it's in blue, that means I think it's going to be a really close game. There's a high chance for, you know, an upset or like a 50-minute team fight that decides the game. So these are kind of your high-risk, high-reward games. And usually these really close games, these 50-minute games, are the games that get the most fantasy points. So those are the ones you definitely want to keep an eye out on. Okay, so my S tier teams this week are FlyQuest, TSM, Cloud9, and Fnatic. FlyQuest has been playing phenomenal, and I know that a lot of people are asking, you know, can this can this last? Can this keep going? Is FlyQuest going to keep winning? Um, and the truth is no. I mean, they lost one of their games last week, but they still put up decent fantasy points. This week is going to be very difficult for them. They're going against Dignitas and Immortals. And what makes it very difficult is that if Dignitas and Immortals show up to play and they're on their A game, they can both beat FlyQuest. The problem is, is that both Dignitas and Immortals have been incredibly inconsistent in these first two weeks, which is why I'm giving FlyQuest the slight edge. I would say, you know, if they played 10 times, FlyQuest would win the majority of them. So that's why I'm giving FlyQuest a slight edge, and I do think that FlyQuest is going to get decent fantasy points regardless of whether they win or lose. Uh, but this is a much riskier week for FlyQuest uh, this week. TSM is going up against CLG and Phoenix One. Um, Phoenix One has been showing a lot of potential lately. I don't think that they're going to be able to beat TSM, but uh, I think they'll put up a really good fight. And then also CLG. CLG has not been playing well, but CLG has a tendency to show up against really tough teams like Cloud9 and TSM. So I don't think that TSM is going to beat Cloud9 as easy as a lot of people think they are going to. I think that it's actually going to be a, 
a much closer matchup, which might actually drive up the number of fantasy points that both teams get. Cloud9 has a pretty easy week this week. Envy is probably the worst team in NA right now. Uh, Echo Fox has been looking a lot better, um, but it's only been, you know, a couple games so far. So it's not it's not a consistent trend yet, and I do think that Cloud9 is the best team in NA right now. So they should be able to beat Echo Fox. And then finally, Fnatic, they've got Misfits and Rock Hat this week. So uh, I think the Misfits game will be closer than the Rock Hats game. I think that Fnatic will probably stomp Rock Hat. Um, but I do think that Fnatic will be able to win both of those games. A tier, Phoenix 1, Splice, Echo Fox. This Phoenix 1 pick is is really risky, I gotta say. right? If Phoenix 1 winds up losing to Immortals, then Immortals could be A tier, and Phoenix 1 might drop down to B tier. So that's something that you gotta really keep in mind. Um, Immortals is just really hit or miss right now, which is why I'm giving the slight edge to Phoenix 1. I do think the Phoenix one is going to lose a close one to TSM, uh, but they should be able to get decent fantasy points. They should have pretty close games, uh, all four to six matches that they've got, and uh, that should generate a decent amount of fantasy points for Phoenix one. Next up we've got is Splice. This was supposed to be a really good week for Splice, and then Unicorns of Love came out and looked phenomenal in week two. So now I'm I'm not so sure. I don't think that... If Unicorns of Love from Week 2 shows up in Week 3, I don't think that Splice can beat them. So there's definitely a lot of questions that still need to be answered. Uh, if Splice can keep it close, they will get a lot of fantasy points. So it's just a question of, can Splice drag out the games and get a lot of fantasy points? And if they're able to upset Unicorns of Love, that might even push them into the S-tier range. Uh, and then my final A-tier team is actually going to be Echo Fox, which is probably surprising to a lot of people. And the reason for that is that Echo Fox seems like that they can get a lot of fancy points regardless of whether they win or lose. And last week they looked way, way better than uh, week one. So they definitely got that upward trajectory. It seems like the team is starting to gel around Acadian and Froggen. So things look really good for Echo Fox. Um, but we definitely have to keep an eye on them and see if this is just, you know, if they were just a one-hit wonder or if they're actually going to be a, a force to be reckoned with in NA. B tier, I've got Dignitas, Liquid, and Immortals. So Dignitas, definitely a lot of hype surrounding Dignitas. They definitely have a very good team, but they have not been putting up good fantasy points. They've been consistently putting up like B and C tier uh, fantasy points uh, in the first two weeks, which is why I can't rate them higher. Even if they beat FlyQuest, I don't see them breaking into that S tier, which is what they should be able to do if they go 2-0. Um, it just seems like they don't get a lot of fantasy points, uh, and I, I, I can't really explain it, but that's just the fact of the matter for the first two weeks. Hopefully things improve for Dignitas, because I know I've got a lot of Dignitas players, and I definitely thought that they were going to be, you know, pretty high point scorers in this split. Liquid is also one of those teams where they're, they're very hit or miss. It's hard to know who's going to show up week to week with Liquid. Uh, it seems like Lorlo's been playing really well, but I'm still waiting for Rainover and Piglet to come online. So, um, yeah, I do think that they'll be able to beat Envy, but I do think that they're going to lose to Echo Fox. And then finally we got Immortals. Immortals is another one of those teams where they are incredibly hit or miss. They can look fantastic at times, and they can look horrible at times. I think this is going to be a rough week for them. They're going up against Phoenix 1 and FlyQuest. I think that they have a better chance at beating Phoenix 1 than they do at beating FlyQuest. Um, but I do think that they'll keep it close in both of those matches, which should give them decent fantasy points. They probably won't top the fancy point charts, but it should be decent fantasy points. C tier, we've got CLG, NVG2, Unicorns of Love, and H2K. So CLG is one of those weird teams where they, they keep losing, but they keep getting a lot of fancy points. So they, they drag out these games, they have a lot of really long games, 40-50 minute games, and they rack up a lot of fantasy points even though they lose. So it's possible that CLG might you know, get bumped up into the B tier, even the A tier, even if they lose. But I don't want to rely on that week in and week out for CLG. I don't want to rely on the fact that you know, they just drag out the games and that's how they get a lot of fantasy points. I definitely think that they are not a top tier team right now. Uh, they're still kind of gelling. It doesn't seem like they can get all on the same page. Like They'll have one game where one player does well and one game where another player does well, but they can never have multiple players playing well at the same time, which is very weird because CLG has been playing together for longer than anyone else, any other team 
they've had the same you know team members for the longest period of time and then envy envy's been having a lot of issues they definitely look a lot better in week two than they did in week one because they had their full roster uh hopefully they can continue to improve and uh i don't think they're going to get their first win uh this week but maybe you know week four week five they'll pick up a win and then G2 Unicorns of Love and H2K, obviously they're, they're some of the top teams in Europe, but they're only playing one game this week, so I think they're going to be uh, C tier. And that leaves your D tier, Misfits, Vitality, Rocket, Origin, and Giants. Okay, so now we're going to get into the nitty gritty details. Now we're going to get into every single team, every single player, analyzing how they're performing week in and week out, and see if we can get you know some kind of sleeper picks and things like that. So... If the player's um, the week is in purple for that player, that means that they're performing better than their teammates. If it's in yellow, that means that the player is performing worse than their teammates. If you see something in green, that means that the team got, had a victory in that matchup or that I got the correct team grade because I'm giving every team a grade week, every week. And then if it's in red, that means that it's, they got defeated in that matchup or I have an incorrect team grade. And then you'll see a blue um, box. That's the current week. It's currently week three. So uh, hopefully that makes sense to everyone. So the first thing we're going to talk about is FlyQuest. And we're just going to go down the tiers. So that we're going to cover the S teams first. Then the uh, A teams, B teams, et cetera, et cetera. So let's take a look at FlyQuest. So week three, I'm predicting they're going to be S tier. I think they're going to win both their matches. Um, Balls has been kind of like all over the place. He was, you know, S tier week one, performing better than his team. And then he was A tier week two, performing worse than his team. Um, I think that he'll probably be A tier around this week. I think that Moon High, Alltech, Lemonation will probably all be around S tier. Um, very impressed with Moon. He's definitely looked like he's improving a lot. The real core of FlyQuest, though, is High. High is the center of FlyQuest both literally and figuratively. Uh, how FlyQuest does is how High does. And uh, High's shot calling is really what's empowering this team. I think that's the only reason why they're, they're doing so well is High's shot calling is legendary. And he's really been playing well in the laning phase. And then he's just, he's moving his pieces perfectly. He's just playing, you know, chess when everybody else is playing checkers right now. So he's, he's fantastic. If you can pick him up, uh, please do or try to trade for him because he's, he's doing great things. And, uh, yeah, I think that FlyQuest is going to do well this week. I think most of their players are going to be S tier. TSM. TSM's been playing really consistent. Uh, most people aren't playing better or worse than each other on the team. They're all kind of all a, either A tier or S tier. Um, the only person who wasn't S tier in week two was Sven Skarin. Um, I think that'll probably continue into week three. He might get S tier. Uh, but it seems like he's that Sven Skarin is prioritizing his lanes more than he's prior, prioritizing himself. He's playing more of a supportive role. Um, so I do think the TSM is going to win both their games. I think they will be S tier, though I'm not positive that everyone is going to be S tier on TSM. All right, Cloud9. Cloud9 really revolves around Jensen right now. You see the contracts. He's, he sets up a ton of vision around mid lane. He prioritizes mid lane. He's constantly trying to gank for Jensen. It seems like they're a very mid-centered team. They kind of leave impact alone on his own, and he just kind of 1v1s people. Um, but yeah, Cloud9 is definitely mid-centric right now. They're kind of neglecting their bot lane, which is why you're seeing uh, Sneaky and Smoothie aren't performing as well as the rest of the team. Uh, I think that that will probably continue. I don't think that Sneaky will get as many points as Jensen in Week 3. Um, but yeah, I think that Cloud9 will be S tier, um, but their bot lane will probably struggle a little bit. All right, and then finally we got Fnatic. This is the first week that Fnatic's actually going to have a chance to get some decent fantasy points. I predict just about everybody is going to get um, S tier this week on Fnatic. I think Caps has been playing fantastic. So has been playing fantastic. Reckless has been playing fantastic. The only person that I've been kind of a little bit hesitant about on Fnatic has actually been amazing. I feel like he has um, not been playing to the level that he is probably capable of. Um, I feel like he's probably the weak link on Fnatic right now. He's not bad by any stretch of the imagination. He's just not at the same level, I feel, as some of the rest of the players on Fnatic. 
All right, so now we're getting into the A tier team. So first up, we got Phoenix One. So this is kind of a weird one. Week one, Ryu and Arrow were definitely better than the rest of their team, and then week two, Ryu and Arrow were definitely worse than the rest of their team. So it's kind of hard to predict who's going to do well. Um, and Nori's been playing fantastic. I think he's definitely a very good pickup, and it's really more about like who Nori gets fed. Like uh, in week two, it seemed like Nori was prioritizing more Zig. And then uh, in week one, it seems like he was more prioritizing Ryu and Arrow. Uh, I think that they're going to be more mid and 80 carry centric. They're going to put Inori on a carry jungler like Kha'Zix. They're going to put Zig on a tank. I think that's the, the best play style for Phoenix 1 right now. And I think they're going to try and prioritize getting uh, Ryu and Arrow fed. So I think that those players are going to be around A tier. And then Zig might drop down to B tier since he won't be getting as much priority. Okay, we got Splice. First week that they're actually going to have a decent week. However, they're going up against Unicorns of Love, who played fantastic week two. Uh, so I think that they will struggle with Unicorns of Love, but I do think they're going to be solid A tier across the board. Uh, Splice has been able to put up decent points, even with one match. You can see that in week two, a couple of the players on their team were C tier, even though they only played one match, which is actually really impressive. Um, but yeah, I think that they're going to be solid A tier this week. Okay, finally we got Echo Fox, uh, last A tier team. So uh, the big one we got to talk about is Acadian right now. He was, you know, S tier in week one was just absolutely phenomenal. Had a had a fantastic week one, and then week two didn't didn't do quite as so hot. You know, was C tier in week two. Uh, I think he is going to kind of normalize in week three. It's very clear that they're prioritizing Froggen, Acadian Froggen, uh, very similar to uh, what Cloud Nine is doing. Uh, similar play style, and I definitely think that Keith and Gate are picking it up. They kind of had a very poor week one, but they picked it up a lot in week two. So I think that they're going to be a pretty solid AT, A tier team across the board. Dignitas. Okay, we got we really got to talk about Dignitas. You can see that you know someday has been performing um, worse than expected, and I think that that has to do with the fact that. Um, He's been getting camped a lot because he's just a really fantastic top laner. And I don't think that Dignitas is really utilizing Someday's abilities that well. I really think they should be putting Someday on a carry top laner. He should be split pushing a lot more. They should be running a 1-4 comp or a 1-3-1 comp. Instead, they're putting him on a lot of tanks. And I feel like they're really wasting a lot of his potential because he is phenomenal on a lot of the carry top laners. Like his Fiora is, is fantastic. Um, Lod and X Special, another one that kind of did poorly, uh, especially Lod, he was C tier both week one and week two. So, uh, I would try to stay away from Someday and Lod. They seem like they've been consistently, uh, C tier every single week so far. But I think that Chaser, Keen, X Special, and just as the team overall is going to be around B tier. Alright, Team Liquid, another team that's been kind of just hit or miss, right? Lorlo has definitely been the best player on Liquid as far as fantasy points are concerned. He was S tier week one. They did very poorly in week two. I think he's going to bounce back and he'll be about A tier in week three. Uh, Rainover, I'm really looking for Rainover to pick things up. He's been C tier uh, both week one and week two. Uh, and then Piglet has also not been performing fantastic. He's been B tier and C tier. So I think that across the board they're going to be roughly B tier. I think that if you're going to pick up anyone on Team Liquid, it probably should be either Lorlo or Matt. Okay, so Immortals. Immortals is really defined by how Dardock plays. If Dardock plays well, Immortals plays well. If Dardock plays poorly, Immortals plays poorly. And in week two, Dardock was making all sorts of horrible calls that uh, really cost his team a lot. They almost lost to Envy. Um, so it seems like Immortals is a team that goes on tilt easily. Uh, and that's that's not good for fantasy points. That definitely adds a lot more risk to having Immortal players on your team. As you can see that in Week 2, Flame was D tier. Cody Sun was D tier. Ollie was D tier. And the rest of them were C tier. Um, not good. Not good at all for Immortals. Especially when you're expecting them to be you know A tier or B tier or even S tier. Um... This week, I think that they will get more fancy points than week two. 
Uh, I do think they're going to lose both of their matches, but I think they are going to probably go three games in a lot of these matches, so they should be able to get at least, you know, decent fancy points and be around B tier. I think that Cody Sun had a really heat off week just because of the, the poor shot calling that Immortals had. Usually the AD carry gets punished the most when uh, shot calling is poor. So I think that Cody Sun is probably your best bet for an Immortals player. Um, Poe Belter has been kind of C tier every week, so I'm expecting him to continue to be C tier. Um, but yeah, Dardock. Dardock is really kind of the, the core of Immortals right now, and whatever his temperament is on a given day, on a given week, that's how Immortals is going to play. Okay, we got to talk about CLG because CLG is really weird, right? They keep losing a lot of games. They're, they're 1 in 3 right now. And yet they're still able to put up good fantasy points. It's very weird. Um, you can see that in week two, Darshan, Xmithy, and Huhi all had A tier points, even though the team went 0 and 2, which is very unusual. Um, that's mainly because they just really lengthened out the games. They had really long matches against FlyQuest and Cloud9. I don't think that they're going to be able to replicate that performance in week three. I think that they're going to. Uh, they'll probably have a, a pretty close matchup with TSM, but I don't think you can really rely on them getting a lot of fantasy points this week. Uh, if you're going to play anybody, I would say Smithy or Huhi are probably the most consistent uh, out of the CLG players. I would avoid Stixay and Aphromoo. It seems like that they are um, kind of hit or miss. I mean, week one they did fantastic. They were S tier, uh, but week two they were kind of B tier, C tier. Same with Darshan. Sometimes he performs great, sometimes he performs poorly. He's kind of been hit or miss uh, this season. So Smithy and Huhi are definitely the more consistent uh, performers on CLG. Okay, Envy. So Envy um, obviously had some issues. They're 0-4 right now. I think they're going to be 0-6 by the end of this week. Um, C tier across the board. They might be able to lengthen out the games. They might take you know one game off of Team Liquid. Um, which will allow them to get some, you know, okay fantasy points, but they're not going to be above C tier, I don't think, this week. G2, only playing one match this week. They'll be C tier across the board. I am looking for them to move up to probably S tier in week four, though. So if you can pick up some G2 players, definitely do that now. Unicorns of Love looked really phenomenal week two. Like, really phenomenal. S tier across the board, except for their team score. Um, upset H2K. I think that they have the advantage over Splice since Splice lost to H2K. Um, but they're not going to get, you know, a huge amount of fantasy points because they've only got one match this week. H2K, another team that is looking decent, definitely, you know, top half of the EU side. Uh, I think they will be able to beat Vitality, but they'll only be C tier this week. Uh, in week four, they're going against G2 and Rockat. Um, I don't think they're going to be able to beat G2 unless they have a really phenomenal showing this week and G2 has a really poor showing in week 3. But I still think that they'll probably take it to 3 games and they'll keep it close enough that they'll be able to get good fantasy points. Misfits, one of those teams that uh, is also hit or miss. Um, week 2, they had you know Hans Sama had phenomenal uh, fantasy points. But then you were looking at Afari and Kakao had below average fantasy points for the team. Um, this week, I, they're going against Fnatic. I don't think they're going to beat Fnatic, which is going to drop them down into the D tier. Vitaly, this is another one of those teams that on paper looked like they could be fantastic. Cabo Shard was actually S tier in week two, um, but they're going up into H2K in week three. I don't think they're going to beat H2K, and that is going to drop them into D tier. Rockat. Uh, another team that's definitely struggling. They're going up against Fnatic this week, so it doesn't make anything easier on them. I think they're going to be D tier across the board. And then Origin, haven't won a game yet. Uh, week 3 will be no different. They will lose the Splice, and they'll continue to be D tier. And then finally, we got Giants. They're going to get to G2. I don't think that they're going to be G2. They'll be D tier across the board. So uh, the final thing I'm going to talk about is my record. I'm going to be keeping track of um, how many matches I accurately predict and also if I accurately predict the grade for the team, the overall team grade. 
Uh, so that's what I talk about in the beginning of this video. So if I get above 80%, I consider that S tier for myself. Um, and that's in purple. And then you can see, you know, A tier is in red, 70 to 79%. Blue is in uh, is B tier, 60 to 69%. Green, C, 50-59%. If I get less than 50% right, then I suck and I'm yellow tier. So, um, so far, week one for the grade... I got 13 right, 7 wrong, gave me a 65% um, correct, which gave me a B tier. And uh, as far as my win prediction, I got 12 correct um, predictions of the winner of the match, 4 wrong, 75% correct. So that puts me in A tier. This week was a bit weird because I actually went up to 83% for predicting the correct result of the match but I went down in predicting the grades uh, for the teams. I went down to 55% predicting, predicting the correct grade for the team. And a lot of that had to do with uh, teams either getting stomped and not getting a lot of fantasy points, or teams who lost but made the games last for 50 plus minutes and ended up getting a lot more fantasy points. So that definitely threw me off. Week 2 was... Uh, very unusual. There's a lot of really close matches. Um, definitely a lot of surprises that happened in week two. Hopefully week three kind of stabilizes things a little bit and we can get more of a trend, get some more data points so we can better predict weeks four and onward. Um, but anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you guys like the more detail that I've that I've added to these. I can't guarantee that I'm going to be able to add this much detail every week. Um, but if it's something that you guys enjoy, I will put in the effort. So please, you know, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment. Let me know if you like it or you dislike it. And, uh, if you have any questions, also leave a comment. I'll be happy to answer them. If you haven't subscribed yet and you like these videos, please subscribe. That way you can make sure you get the updates. I try to upload regularly, but I hope you all have a fantastic day. This is Randomonium signing off.